today mm-hmm. we're talking to Pavel Sankovic, Belarusian swimmer, uh, medalist, and record breaker. And now Pavel lives in the US, but still actively participates in uh, the Belarusian protest and also is a member in the Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation. So Pavel, my first question, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about what's happening in Belarus in January right now? After fraudulent elections of 2020, uh, people started protesting uh, the results of this election and uh, the claim that Lukashenko still won because by the multiple sources, he lost the election by by a landslide he gained no more than 20 25 percent in, in some areas and uh, probably less than three in in some other areas people start protesting very peacefully no rocks were thrown no glass was broken you know nothing similar to that was happening in uh, Portland Oregon in the United States. And uh, despite that, police tried to suppress these protesters just with with brutal, brutal force. Real bullets were used, not just rubber bullets. bullets. Uh, More than, I think, by at this moment, it's more than 30,000 people were detained. They were tortured. Some were killed. Women and men were raped in prison. Sentences were just uh, irrational, illogical. Uh, people were sentenced to six, seven, ten years in prison for saying something, not actually doing something unlawful, but just saying something. And more than 90% of these claims just made up. So many, many protesters didn't even do anything. They were just on the street showing support to the elected leader, Svetlana Tikhanovska. And uh, as a result, self-elected government of Belarus were suppressing protesters with just a brutal force. Let's talk um, a little bit more about you. Uh, you built a, yeah. a successful career in Belarus. Why did you decide to relocate to the United States? I was seeking new information and uh, just exposure to new coaching styles. And I was very interested in experiencing on myself different approach to training and uh, psychological approach. United States swimmers in general, famous for their consistency and just a relaxed state at different swim meets. So I just wanted to experience that for myself. And uh, slowly but surely, it kind of grew in me. And finally, I made a decision to to move to States, at least for some period of time, to experience that for myself. And um, the easiest way for me to do that was to transfer to university here in the United States. And that's that's what I've done. You're an active member of the Belarusian Sports Solidarity Foundation. Can you tell mm-hmm. us a little bit more about the foundation, uh, its goals and what it does? The main goal of the foundation is to provide financial and uh, legal support for athletes who suffered any kind of repressions, either physical, uh, emotional. They were fired from their jobs at national teams. They were uh, denied participation in certain meets, so denied funding. Um, so to support these kind of athletes who still uh, have a voice and ready to express their opinions openly, uh, this is Belarus Sports Solidarity Foundation. Uh, so just recently you have started um, a campaign that's called Marathon for Freedom. Can you tell us more yep. about the campaign? So this is one one of the important parts of the existence of BSSF. Uh, at this point, they already donated more than $150,000 to support uh, different athletes from different sports and different kinds of support. They sent some of them to a train camp, uh, some legal help, some just rehabilitation after they spent a um, number of days or weeks or months in prison. And uh, this is the next step that we're going to make is uh, raise more funds and support more athletes as the Olympic Games getting close. Because all these funds is just not, you know, it's not beginners. We're not talking about beginners. We're talking about national team members who already represented Belarus at Olympic Games. Uh, Some of them very famous, some of them not so much, but all of them very successful and uh, promising prospect. This is a bold goal that we have to raise at least another $150,000, and uh, we're just going to try to make this campaign successful. It supports everybody who's ready to raise their voice against the 
dictatorship and those who express this opinion openly turn out to be those professional athletes. So at the moment, we aim to support those athletes who have a platform to spread the message and represent Belarus on the world stage. Simply because they have a platform, they're going to reach more people and hopefully the economic sanctions that European Union, uh, they start already implementing certain economic sanctions. We hope uh, our voice is just going to you know, mul- multiply that effort. So what would you yeah. point out as the main differences between the sports industry in Belarus and in the U.S.? So, of course, the, the economic situation is very different. United States versus Belarus, one of the top three, if not number one, economy of the world versus 100, I'm not sure, 30-something, 50-something. Uh, and at the same time, some of the, our sports officials uh, demand same kind of results. It just It's just not possible. We don't have the same starting point. And this is the main factor to consider. So the economy is uh, dying in Belarus. It's not going to survive the next 10, 15, 20 years. Something has to be done. Uh, we had devolvation, of, uh, I believe we had four since, I just remember, since 1997. And I mean, I expect it to happen again. So this is the main starting point. The second one that kind of leads to, the first one leads to the second one is that everything controlled and uh, most of the things in sport owned by the government. So we don't have private owners, private pool owners or private uh, hockey palace owners. We don't have any of that. Any Anything you can think of, pretty much everything belongs to, to the government. So everything controlled, sponsored, and decided on by the government, which is, of course, not right. The, the uh, sole goal of the government should be to support independent contractors and uh, self-employed individuals to develop all those things. And their goal is supposed, the government's goal is supposed to be to create the environment where they can thrive. Uh, unfortunately, for us, it's it's not the case. Uh, they less interested in that probably than anything else. That's, I would say, more probably their goal to, to make sure it doesn't happen. Because people with opinions and people with influence, people with money, it's those who they fear. Uh, in the United States, obviously, it's, uh, it's a free market. So the situation is very different. Uh, you still have family in Belarus, right? I still have family in Belarus. Basically, every, everybody except my mom is in Belarus, yes. Mm-hmm. So with the rising level of repressions, are you worried for your family over there? That was in my mind from the day one when the protests started happening because uh, the law doesn't exist anymore. And they the, the self-proclaimed government and Lukashenko as a... Uh, Uh, president who named that himself basically they can do whatever they want the law doesn't stop them and i mean he said himself from the stage that this is the time where the law shouldn't be followed that's going to be a rough translation but he said uh, something like that that uh, you know at this time these difficult times in the history of our country uh, it's not necessary to follow the law And that's what they've done from the day one. Well, it's it's been happening for a while, but I feel like in 2020 with the exposure through social media, we just saw that very clearly. Yeah, we received continuous reports of uh, repressions, of torture in jails and lots of other things that seem surreal, unrealistic in the modern society, yeah. especially in Europe. But it is a fact that, yes, it still happens in Belarus. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, the situation with athletes in terms of repressions? They do not slow down because of the names. And uh, Alexander Hersemene, who is the head of the BSSF, she had to flee the country uh, fearing imprisonment or some other type of uh, repressions. Our Very famous basketball players, Elena Levchenko, she spent uh, a few weeks in prison and she was tortured there. Some other Belarusian, very famous Belarusian athletes also were imprisoned and uh, for no reason, for expressing their own opinion. And they, they're not protected at the moment. Like I said, the law does not exist and uh, the government tend to do wherever they want. They do not follow the constitution. They do not 
uh, fear any repressions because the law enforcement, everybody involved in the same leadership, I don't know what, what even I should call it, but uh, it's uh, it, it just sad to see. And uh, I'm still glad that those repressed athletes still have the willpower to raise their voice and continue expressing their opinion, continue uh, spreading the information of what's going on in Belarus. But the answer is yes, athletes is not is not excluded and we're trying to uh, everything now power to support them how do you see the resolution of the crisis in belarus my my only hope and the i feel like the main direction that uh democratic forces should take is economic sanctions at the moment unfortunately russia supports the dictator lukashenko and uh it sounds like putin is 100 backing him up so uh, economic sanctions i see as the main gateway um to our freedom and i don't think there should be any doubts in mind because there is no uh you know side where it's 50 50 right now with everything that's going on belarus the tortures the people being raped killed in prison it's very one-sided you can see that this is the good side and this is the evil side um even i mean the government themselves they to some of france professional athletes told me that they were told to take the po- social media posts down that were um just uh, they were vo- the, these athletes were were voicing their opinion that the cruelty and uh, the repression should, should stop they didn't say you know who's the aggressor so the government kind of take them on themselves they claim the responsibility for those actions themselves nobody was accusing them to start with athletes they were just saying that you know we are for peace in belarus and we do not support the valiance and the government asked them to take this post down so that's the first moment second uh this the the latest um marathon it calls uh what you would translate it zoj marathon for uh basically the marathon for healthy lifestyle Uh, because Belarus makes a lot of money from selling tobacco and alcohol to its population. After we announced this marathon, more repressions followed. So again, the government claimed the responsibility for those actions that were not even accused of. So I think it's very one-sided and uh, I hope if any European leader watches that, it's it's nothing to think about it. The sanctions should follow and the quicker they do it, the the quicker all Belarusians can uh, see next democratic election, hopefully at the end of this year or, or next year.